Mountain News at 11. A free meal for the homeless. Good evening, I'm Connor James. Tonight in downtown Hazard, volunteers from the Hope House gave out food at the pavilion next to City Hall. Volunteers told us they want to make sure the homeless are still getting meals after the Hope House shut down. WYMT's Emily Bennett has more in our top story at 11. Devastation. That's what the staff of the Hope House felt after being told they had to shut down. Every night you're wondering if people are still eating and whether they're sleeping and uh, that that has a way of haunting you. Wanting to find a way to still help. I mean, that's this main goal, showing people that we still care, that people do have a heart, no matter what. Rashawn Murphy and Bessie Hughes volunteered at the Hope House from day one and wanted to make sure they still have what they need. I just want to make sure these people have some sort of substance in their stomach. You know, it may be just chips and a hot dog, but it's food. They know what it's like to not have a home. I have been in their situations before, and I have lived on the streets. I have know what it feels like to starve, and I've been in their situation, and it breaks my heart. This first meal is just a stepping stone for what's to come. Well, anytime that I can and I can get help from other people, I'm going to come down here and serve meals. Because Hugh says this is her calling. It, it devastated me, it really did, because I've put two years of my life into that shelter. Since the day we opened, I've been there. I haven't got paid one dime. I didn't do it for that reason. The first week after I was there, I was like, man, this is what I'm supposed to do. And the staff, always passionate to give back. When you serve in the capacity that we have, you, you never lose the heart, no matter the circumstances. Continuing to help, no matter what the cost. In Perry County, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. The Vico Fire Department helped serve the meal and donated some of the food. Now the Hope House is shut down, but Fugit tells us there are plans in the works for another facility. And the East Kentucky House of Hope has been operating in Martin since March. The mission of the house is to serve people in the community who are homeless or in need. In the month since its opening, those involved with the house say the community has been more than supportive. That support comes in many forms, cooking hot meals for the people in the home, donating non-perishables and clothing, and offering jobs to help them get back on their feet. Jessica Burke works at the shelter and says she feels like the community truly cares about the mission of the House of Hope. I've never seen such caring people in my whole life, especially the community here in Martin. Burke says the outreach has come from churches, restaurants, and law enforcement officers from across the region. It has been a very hot day in the mountains. It was the hottest day on record, and now I'm finally starting to cool off with that sun setting. We'll go ahead and take you to Interstate 64 in Moorhead. Beautiful blue skies, that sun setting as well, and just calm conditions over there this evening. Even taking a look at satellite and radar, those isolated rain chances we dealt with a little bit earlier this afternoon. I know Harlan got a nice little downpour as well. Most of us, though, stayed on the dry side. There's those temperatures still pretty warm. We're still getting a reading of 80 in parts of Jackson in Pikeville, 81 to be exact. Those 70s, though, still for a lot of us, especially those mid to upper 70s in two parts of the Big Sandy. And those dew points, upper 60s to lower 70s, definitely feeling a little bit on the muggy side this evening, but I was out there earlier for dinner. Didn't feel absolutely terrible, but it will be warmer once again as we head into tomorrow. But big changes are on the way as scattered storms look to move in for your Tuesday. Another possible cold front moving into the mountains sometime this week. But what that means is that nicer temperatures will be on the way soon. I'll have a look at that for that forecast coming up in a little bit. Connor. All right. Thank you, Paige. Well, listen to this. A Las Vegas man is accused of trying to kidnap a Kentucky high school student. Boone County deputies say 18 year old Benjamin Margitza flew from Nevada to northern Kentucky Saturday night. Deputies say he talked to a girl online four years ago. They say in the past year he became obsessed, wanting to marry the girl. Deputies say the 18-year-old knew she went to Connor High School, waited for her in the parking lot, then grabbed the girl's arm. Another student stopped Margitza, and the victim contacted a school resource officer. That officer later found Margitza in the back of an Uber trying to leave the school. He is charged with attempted kidnapping and criminal trespassing. And in Knox County, a man is behind bars charged with burglary and attempted rape. Deputies say Michael Sizemore was taken into custody after they were called to a disturbance over the weekend. That's when they learned he was wanted on charges out of Knox County. Sizemore is also facing charges in Clay County. 
And recently, officials found drugs, cigarette lighters, and even clothing inside jail cells at the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center in Johnson County. The findings have prompted a heightened security level. Now, employees are using a $185,000 body scanner. Administrator Byron Hansford says they are also taking other routes to ensure the safety of inmates and employees alike. I think the staff has been solely depending on that. And here recently we have started not only body scans, but also uh, strip searches. The detention center has a maximum capacity of 152 inmates. However, right now it's home to 218. Officials are also looking to better train employees so they know what to look for. Plus, Hansford hopes to hire more staff with multiple years of experience. And Black Jewel miners are entering their fourth week on the railroad tracks. The miners started protesting in July after Black Jewel filed for bankruptcy and left them without a paycheck for the work they completed. Chris Rowe used to work for Black Jewel and has been spending most nights at the tracks. He says the support from others has kept him going. They keep us upbeat instead of letting us get down. You know, because it's easy to get brought down standing out in the heat like we have. The miners say they plan on staying at the tracks however long it takes to get what they're owed. And student athlete participation in Kentucky reached all time highs last year. While football remains the most popular sport among Kentucky high school boys, participation in football is on the decline. As Lee K. Howard found out, the declining numbers can be attributed to a variety of factors. It's a story new at 11. <laughs> Friday nights are for football in the Bluegrass State, but the number of high school students choosing to take the field under the Friday night lights is declining. It, it's a constant challenge with things that are in the news, and, and uh, there's, there's a variety of reasons, and everybody you talk to is going to have a different reason. Kentucky High School Athletics Association Commissioner Julian Tackett says at the varsity level, participation is down around 500 kids compared to 15 years ago. Go, come on, let's go. Recent numbers by the KHSAA show a steady decline over the past four years. From an all-time high of 14,336 high school football participants in 2015 to just 13,075 high school players last season. For us, that's not that big a decline, but where we're losing them is the non-varsity level. The problem is, if you sit and think about it, that doesn't bode well for the future. What? The cause of this downward trend may be due to a variety of factors, most notably injury concerns related to concussions and brain injuries. Woodford County head coach Dennis Johnson played in the NFL in the early 2000s and thinks football is as safe as it's ever been. Football's gotten a, got a bad rap because of concussion talk and, you know, and, and I don't know, any sport you can get hurt in, but I think if you if you teach it the right way, you know, kids will be safe and, and there's going to be injury in every sport, so you really can't, you really can't tell a parent that, well, you can't, can you guarantee my son you can't do that? Let's go. Those safety concerns have some parents steering their kids away from football. That's a hard conversation. I mean, I coach my own son, so I had to be dad and coach and I know the parent and when my son was out there playing sometime I had to take my coach's hat off and you know be a parent so I completely understand the reservation still other coaches we spoke to link the decline to the mentality of kids today kids don't want to wait anymore everything's immediate to them that if I don't have the results right away which is not what the weight room does which is not the game of football if I don't have immediate results right away they tend to feel lose interest and want to drift to something else pretty quickly and I think that's hurting the game of football I, I don't think that we live in a uh, society now where maybe toughness is as highly respected as it was maybe 15 20 years ago and so the badge of uh, courage or, or the badge of honor you might say that I had when I grew up playing uh, is kind of gone uh, washed away another contributing factor is sports specialization what we have seen is a decline in the number of kids who will play something different each season. Tackett says a steady decline in football participation can have a negative effect on the other sanctioned sports. What we have to guard against is it's the biggest fundraiser for most of our schools. Uh, and and a, a decline of a one bad football gate could hurt the cross-country team or the tennis team. 
While high schoolers now have many other options, from archery to bass fishing and even esports, keeping participation numbers up in football is a priority. We've got to make sure that football remains a viable alternative. I'd hate to think of the interscholastic community without Friday Night Lights. Well, a group in Manchester is walking the walk. They're calling themselves Project Hope Manchester. It's people in the area who care about the city and want to see it thrive. They, along with help from jail inmates and dismiss volunteers, work to restore storefronts, sidewalks, and the like. Uh, lots of ideas are coming in. What we're finding out is we're, we're, we're trying to take two or three projects at a time and really just focus on those. Those set a couple of goals and uh, work and accomplish those and then move on to the next one. The group is getting permission from the landlords before working on the buildings. And the City of London has approved for the London Fire Department to get a new fire truck to replace an old out-of-date one. The London Fire Department says their second-in-command engine is 33 years old and is not considered safe with features like an open cab. Firefighters say since they've been able to take more calls in the last few years, the safety hazard and the lack of space for their equipment causes issues when they need to use it. It's kind of hard to accommodate for the stuff we carry and the missions we carry out to accommodate for that smaller truck. Firefighters expect to have their new truck by the end of the year. Well, coming up at 11, a police officer involved in the death of an unarmed black man in New York was fired today. And Attorney General William Barr has replaced the person leading the Bureau of Prisons after Jeffrey Epstein's suicide in prison earlier this month. And showers and storms increase Tuesday and continue throughout the work week. I'll have those details coming up.